Hello world and welcome to What Does This Not Do? After a long gap between episodes 2 and 3 and the fourth episode coming before the third was finished, I'm happy to give you already the fifth episode. We are still on the subject of oscillators and since I go alphabetical, today's subject are the remaining modules or developers with A. But there are also exceptions today, so we have also 21 kilohertz and also a module of South Pole which corresponds to a module of audible instruments. The 21 kilohertz palm loop is also the module I want to start with. This module is still pretty new and it is a solid oscillator with different waveforms and a few special features. Initialized it is tuned to C4 and can then be adjusted in the range of plus minus four octaves. With course I have the possibility of tuning in plus minus seven semitone steps and with fine in plus minus one semitone steps. So far nothing surprising. But that changes when we look at the waveforms while the shapes are standard. In the top row we have sawtooth and sine. In the bottom row square wave, triangle and again sine. But these three are tuned one octave lower. Also interesting are the three inputs. Reset triggers the wave at each impulse and X and Lin offer different possibilities of frequency modulation from gentle to crass. This can definitely start a lot. I continue with another newer module, the Slick of Animated Circuits. It's part of the Animated Circuits free welcome package and the simpler version of the commercial module Cosmic with a single oscillator and two waveforms. Slick is therefore also the abbreviation of Slice of Cosmic. This module is a phase distortion oscillator that generates its waveforms by modulating a sine wave at different speeds and distorting the original wave. The fundamental frequency of the oscillator is 261.63 Hz C4 the frequency can be modulated by a signal at the FM input. The intensity of the modulation is adjusted with a bipolar FM control. Two waveforms are available, Sawtooth and Rizzo 2 from the available waveforms of Cosmic. The strength of the phase distortion is set with a big blue button. When turning from full left to right, the waveform changes from a sine wave to a sawtooth or the Rizzo 2 wave with a type resonant filter sweep effect. The phase distortion can be controlled by CV and the modulation is adjusted with the small blue button. This button is an attenuator that inverts the input signal when it is completely left. Even with this slimmed down version you can create very interesting and lively sounds. So it's definitely worth Taking a look at the commercial modules of animated circuits.
and sometimes you don't need an extremely versatile oscillator, just a reliable and simple module. This is definitely true of many of the oscillators presented today, including the two from AS. Although tiny sawish sounds like a simple sawtooth, but it is anything but that. The output signal has more of something from a pointy cap and this can be splitted with the mod controller, creating a resonance that reminds of smacking and that can be controlled per CV. In contrast, the tiny sign is a bit of boring, a sine wave signal which can be regulated in pitch, is all he offers. But like I said, sometimes you don't need more. And besides, connect the tiny soish to the tiny sign and you have wonderful FM sounds. I really like the two tinies. The out-in modules are also quite simple, but still offer interesting waveforms. Oxcart and saw are seen as different sides of the same coin. Both are modified sorties. Oxcart sounds sharper, as you can see in the graphics, and saw rounder. The signals are nearly inverted but not exact. Skip is the expert for round waves. If a sinus is too square, you should try this module. Square, I cannot call with the best of intentions as a square wave. Perhaps as a rectangle which was heavily beaten, so it looks more like pointy cap. Nevertheless, this is an interesting waveform. Despite rather spartan equipment, Jetty is a very versatile sound generator. Plucked in the initialized state, it shows a quasi square wave and sounds like that. Using the large white switch, you select different waveforms, a clean triangle and a distorted sawtooth. The knob is responsible, as with the other modules, for adjusting the pitch. With the sliders, one fades out harmonics of the signal and thus alters the character of the sound. The signal becomes thinner and thinner. And finally a flat line. If I turn down everything except the root, I have a sine wave with every waveform. If I add harmonics again, you can modulate the most different waves. Although with this module, the randomized function of VCV Rack always brings amazing results. We've already heard that there are numerous modules from mutable instruments for VCV Rack. One of these modules is Braids, which is available in VCV Rack in two versions, as macro oscillator from Audible Instruments and as Cornrows X from South Pole. Incidentally, the successor of Braids, who calls himself Plates, 
is already available for VCV Rec. Here he is called Macro Oscillator 2 by Audible Instruments and is part of the preview package which can be purchased for $20. But let's just stay with braids. As usual from Mutable Instruments we have here again a very versatile module which wants to be properly researched. Omri Cohen has numerous videos in his YouTube channel which I highly recommend. You should also download the cheat sheet from Braids Illustrated because you just cannot remember anything. Depending on which program, which sound you select, the controls, timbre and color have different characteristics. Completely unspectacular are the output out and the input volt per octave. A trigger signal at the trick input resets the oscillator phase. Physical or percussive models like plug or kick need this trigger signal to play the sound properly. The trigger input can also be used to trigger the internal AD envelope. Control voltage can also be used to control frequency modulation FM and the timbre and color buttons. With Conros X the length of a trigger delay can also be adjusted with TDLY. But before we explore the differences between the two versions, let's first look at the similarities. In the initialized state, we can see in the display the synthesis model CSAW, an emulation of a sawtooth of the Blade Runner synthesizer Yamaha CS80. Also the small uncleanness in the waveform was also emulated to reproduce the sound character as authentically as possible. Here you can really see the love of detail. I do not go through all the synthesis models here. These are explained very well in the mentioned cheat sheet. Dividing the models in groups, we have classic analog waveforms, digital synthesis, physical simulations, percussion, wavetable and noise. Use the edit or shape slider to select the desired model. The abbreviations in the display are self-explanatory after some time. But a look into the cheat sheet is also always helpful. With fine and coarse you can adjust the pitch at fine plus minus one semitone at coarse plus minus two octaves. Cornrose X also has an extra octave slider that does not have the smooth transition of the cause knob. If a signal is set on the FM input, the frequency modulation can be set with a FM knob. A very interesting but well hidden feature has to be activated by a right click on the module and a tick at META then I can switch the synthesis model with a FM button via the CV signal on the FM input. The farther the FM knob is moved from the center position, the more models are traversed. A very exciting variant of wavetable synthesis. 
In this mode, however, it is no longer possible to manually select the synthesis model via the slider. Also with right click one can select further options. DRFT simulates a non-tuning stable oscillator. Sign applies waveform errors to the output signal. Cornrows X also offers the flat option which applies detuning in the lower and higher frequencies to represent some of the tuning errors of VCOs. Through all the three options the modules sound more analogous, which is indeed often desired. Again, we can feel the attention to detail by the developers. As already mentioned, the timber and color controls are different for each synthesis model. In principle, however, it can be said that timber determines the main development and movement of the timber and color controls a second dimension of the sound. In between is the modulation attenuator which controls the amount and polarity of the modulation applied by the timber CV to the timber parameter. Incidentally, in the context menu, we can also opt for operation as a low CPU. Currently, an important criterion in VCV Rack. Let's go to the other options of braids, which only Cornrows X offers. First, we have here a built in envelope generator which also does not have to be operated as in the original menu but has its own controller. Great! The same applies to the built-in quantizer. Both for the root and for the tone scales are knobs available. And the range of scales is very versatile with 48 possibilities. With Rang we determine the area which the course regulator affects. Particularly interesting here is the mode free and the possibility to operate the oscillator as LFO. All three knobs, timber, modulation and color are equipped with an attenuator that controls the amount of modulation from the internal AD envelope generator to these parameters. The amplitude can also be influenced with its value between 0 and 15 being set via the inner VCA which in turn can be accessed via the context menu. If all these settings are 0 the trick input will operate as sync reset input. Finally, the bitrate can be controlled from 2 to 16 bits and with rate the sample rate of the signal to generate beautiful lo-fi sounds. But although in the context menu hide a few more options. Auto tracks changes in the volt per octave frequency input greater than a semitone and generates a new trigger on each of these triggers. This allows, e.g., control by a note sequencer that does not provide a gate signal. One last option lurks in the context menu of Cornrows X and this is called Packs. I have found no documentation about it so I can only assess its function subjectively. It is a noisy folded pulse wave whose cycle 
Reminds me of a more signal. I have not found a way to change the display number 49, but all buttons work normally. Maybe one of you knows more about it and shares this knowledge with us here. No matter which of the two versions one chooses, Braids is a great module with a lot of potential and see all the dimensioned videos by Omri Cohen. The conclusion of today's episode are three oscillators from Auto da Fe. Actually, it should be four, but the TWLV Auto da Fe has created for SoundMit, I have already presented in an extra episode. There is also an FM module and a snare module on the website of Auto da Fe and the freely available drum modules I introduce elsewhere. Now for Square. As the name suggests, this is a pulse wave oscillator. But it is not a normal pulse wave, but a mix between pulse and sawtooth. And there are also some small convolutions in the signal, which makes it very much alive. The frequency range is plus minus two octaves and can be adjusted via the corresponding control or via the fine control plus minus 1.5 semitones. As with the TWLV, the CV input is intended as a signal input. With a harmonics control we can reduce the number of overtones and smoothen the signal. I can also control this via CV, which can generate bell-like sounds. The structure of cosine is exactly like square, but a fundamental waveform is of course completely different. Unfortunately, anyone who has expected only a phase shifted sign by name will have to disappoint. The signal produced here consists of sine waves with different amplitudes and frequencies. The result sounds like a bandpass filter. All controls and inputs work as in square. Although, here too the modulation of the harmonics via CV is very interesting. Tres amigos! Delight us in the initialized mode with a classic sign and the already mentioned frequency settings. Again, the input signal goes through the CV in and also affects the root. But since we have three friends, three oscillators, we have everything but frequency CV and CV in three times. Above each frequency button is a switch that activates the respective oscillator and below a display with plus and minus to select the waveform. Again, we know this from TWLV, so here too. I would want a stepless transition of the waveforms and the ability to control them via CV. At this point, however, it is over with the similarities and Tres Amigos show what is in them.
namely we do not have three identical individually controllable oscillators but three oscillators that influence each other. If oscillator 1 is disabled, the others will not work either. If I activate oscillator 1, I can activate oscillator 2 alone or together with oscillator 3, but not 1 and 3. The signals of the oscillators add up, which already allows many interesting sounds. But of course there's more, because the oscillators are connected to each other. Oscillator 2 modulates oscillator 1 and oscillator 3 modulates its Amigo 2 which modulates the one again. So here we have a complex amplitude modulation. And not only do we have sine waves that modulate, but eight waveforms per oscillator. And that's not all. Each oscillator has a controllable CV input. Easy to use, many options, I think I will spend more time with the three amigos. And that was it for the fifth episode. I hope you enjoyed it and you want to play and experiment with VCV Rack and its great modules. I am pleased about your feedback and not to forget many thanks to Andrew Belt and all the module developers without whom all this would not be possible. As always you will find the most important links here under the video. That's it from me. Take care. Servus.